Whenever he has any problems that Dr. Jeff Tafford got into was as a result of poor people being on the side of the poor. I'm Dr. Jaffet Ford. I'm the twin brother of Dr. Jeff Tafford, who died at 10.15 this morning. He had been ill for approximately one week. I was determined that he had a cerebrovascular accident, possibly because of hypertension. This morning he got up here at breakfast and video chat with my sister in Florida and he complained of a headache and feeling a bit out of sorts. He started complaining of weakness. I could not record his blood pressure. He started sweating. I called an ambulance and unfortunately he died with the ambulance at the door. The ambulance came very quickly, within, within 10 minutes, but when they came, he just died. So we could say he died, after being ill for one week, he died just like that. Right? He died in the arms of his daughters, his two daughters, and myself, and, and some friends. His 69th birthday was three days ago, the 25th of March. How did you celebrate that? He was ill at that time, so we, we had a quiet time at home, just, just chatting about life, and um, I am asking him to stay and get some rest, which I thought he needed. We were both physicians, we had the same practice, in the same location, at one pen and terrace. I worked in the morning and he worked in the night, so we were able to provide at least 18 hours of care per day. What was he like going on? Oh, he was, first of all, he was extremely bright. See, mm -hmm. we went to primary school in Falmouth, and he has never been second in his class. We left the hospital one month before the common entrance in those days, mm -hmm. and there were three persons that, from Falmouth that passed for Caldwell College. Mm -hmm. It was myself, himself, and another student, after being out of school for six months. You know, he was very, very bright. Mm -hmm. uh, he was brighter uh, than I was. How did he treat you as a twin brother? I am five minutes younger than he was. Mm -hmm. And that gave him the authority he thinks, he believes, to take care of me. So, mm -hmm. he fought all my battles. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. troubled me at school and he found out about it, he'd be the first one to go and confront that person. So I was, I was to him his baby brother. Of course, I thought he was just too, too pushy. We had a very good relationship, extremely good, extremely close, right? And as he will tell you, twins, and I can attest to that, are very special people. What made your brother so passionate about social justice? My father was a policeman. And because of that, we lived all over Jamaica when we were children. At the age of nine, we both had rheumatic fever and was hospitalized for six months. At that time, we had to be transferred from Falmouth Hospital to KPH. There were no children hospital, so we were basically, as young boys, put in the wards with poor people from the poor section. And they treated us like kings. Two country boys as twins, both sick, serious enough to be transferred from a country hospital and consequently they adopted us, so to speak. And because of that, I can say we both developed an undying love for poorer people who can be so genuine and loving. My brother was, well, even more so than I was, very much interested in the poor. So his biggest impact was the thing that he did for the poor. So much so that Food for the Poor asked him to become the medical um, liaison officer. And when they found out that he had a special touch, they allowed him to set up um, outlets in Rima, Majestic Pen, Spanish Town Road, uh, Accurate Walk. He, he had outlets for Food for the Poor all over. And his basic function was to make sure that the poor was taken away, to fulfill the mission of Food for the Poor. He was also a politician, he was a stalwart member of the People's National Party, 
at the time when the People's Party was strongly socialist, and as a result of which we owe our education to the policies of that party, and he felt that, that at the time, and this time that the party represented the people, and therefore he joined that party. Unfortunately, he was never elected to be a member of the House of Representatives, primarily for the reason that the last election, and I must say publicly, was not, was not free or fair, and he was asked not to allow his strong belief to cause social disorder. Hence, he accepted the result which he could easily have overturned in court. He represented the PMP party in Northwest St. Andrew, and his political opponent was, at the time was Mr. Derek Smith. His biggest disappointment was the fact that he thought that the free medication and free health care for the poor in Jamaica was not free enough, and he campaigned bitterly for an improvement in the standard of health care that was given to the poor. He thought that there was a, might have been a double standard of health care, and he thought the poor should have gotten a bigger slice of the cake. He was a very strong advocate for COVID care. As a matter of fact, he published a, a pamphlet and distributed it in the inner city, enlightening people about the effect of the mixture of eucalyptus oil and menthol and the prevention of COVID. He was also very pro-mask and social distance and tried right. to get the poor people to be conscious enough to recognize that COVID is a serious disease. So he was on the radio, he was on television, he put up pamphlets and banners at his place asking people to be more careful of COVID. He and Miss Grange, the culture minister, yes. um, seem to be very close. What, how, how did that come about? Well, you know, um, it's a good question. Miss Olivia Grange is a very pro-social person, despite her being in the what we call the other party. And mm -hmm. he's a very pro-social person. So the two, the two persons meshed. She could ask him to do social things. They could identify social things, and both of them worked together for the poor. She identified that in him. And he identified that in her, so it's not surprising that they became friends. You will have noticed that this controversial issue always involves poor people. Mm -hmm. Whenever he has any problems that Dr. Jeff Tafford got into was as a result of poor people being on the side of the poor, right? He felt that, that the poor, outside of politics, needed somebody to take care of them. His latest project was, was, as you probably know, was in getting the truth about post-mortems, getting the truth about hospital care, getting the truth about justice care, right? And he, was, he became passionate again about those things. And um, he said, he asked people to say, somebody has to stand up for the poor. And he felt that it was his duty. That's what he, he was most passionate about. If the police did something wrong, the poor people came to him and he got involved. If the ministry did something wrong, the poor, they came to Jephthah, he got involved. If the poor person went to hospital and couldn't afford it, he got involved. He was always getting involved in poor people's problems. I personally didn't always approve because it, it, it takes a lot of money to do that. But yeah. that was his passion. What will you miss? the most about your late twin brother? His practice was at night and he saw scores of people without charging them. The poor person, people in Jamaica recognized that they had an excellent doctor they could see for free and they came in droves. In the nights when he reached the office after five, he was sometimes there until two o'clock and more than three quarters of his practice was free. So you miss his kindness? Yes.